that's why we care about where those bones are and the position of those bones because structure dictates function. It's a basic engineering principle, right? If I have a house on, an, on a faulty foundation, is that thing going to stand the test of time? No. So any changes in the alignment of the bones in the spine that irritate nerves has been dubbed a subluxation. That's a shifting of the normal alignment creating a nerve irritation and creating dysfunction in your body. So I rarely use that term because I just tell people, hey, your bones are out of place and that's why you're feeling the way you feel. <laughs> people get it and they're like, okay, yeah. We use the old analogy of a garden hose, right? If you put a kink in a garden hose, how well does it flow? It doesn't. doesn't, right? So we, we don't like kinks in the spine, so to speak. So that nervous system goes to every aspect of the body. The big picture is that, that those nerves control everything that happens in your body, right? So even those visceral functions, those functions that we might not necessarily associate with back pain, may be negatively affected as well. That's why when we tell people, your spine alignment, your posture, directly equals your health. We literally mean that when we say that, because of the influence on the nervous system. So here's normal, right? We want uh, six-pack abs and blonde hair, right? So I better get my hair dye on. <laughs> But from the front, you want eyes, shoulders, and hips all to be level, and you want the, the spine to be vertical, right? That gives the spine strength. That's a column. And then from the side, you want to see the ear, shoulder, hip, and ankle line up with some curves in the spine. And those curves are important as well. And we know to what degree those curves should be in, in, in your spine. And a plus or minus of a little bit one way or the other is going to be okay. But once you start getting out of a normal range to a significant degree, it's going to have a, a large impact on how healthy your spine is and how healthy you are. So, just like blood pressure, you go to your doctor, you get your blood pressure taken, they compare it to a normal. Mm -hmm. You know, and if it's a few points above normal, you're fine. But if it's 50 points over normal, then you're probably in for a heart attack soon, right? So we look at that and we judge risk to you in particular and how, how close you are to normal. This is a really cool study. So I'm going to share a couple studies with you. The Journal of the American Medical Association, JAMA, again, one of the most prestigious medical journals in the world, in 1957, so this is not new information, this study showed that aging in the spinal disc caused postural deviations leading to all this nasty stuff, and then right down here is the, is the key, overall poor quality of health and life as well as a shortened lifespan. Wow. Exactly what I said, okay? Your health of your spine has a direct influence on your quality of life and your longevity. So when you start wearing discs out in your spine, you're really starting to have a huge impact on your overall health. And the thing about discs is once you uh, start to wear a disc out, you can't reverse that process. You can't get that disc back. So then again, prevention is key. Try to maintain that disc as, as much as possible, as long as possible. We're all gonna wear out eventually, but it's just a, about trying to keep your spine as healthy uh, as long as possible. So discs are important. We'll talk a little bit about those in, in just a moment here. But this study right here is showing basically uh, health of the spine and directly related to your overall health and, and longevity. Optimal spine equals optimal health. So the closer you are to normal, the better off your body is going to work. This study showed that abnormal movements in the spine actually had um, an impact on somebody's psychological health as well, right? So the worse off they were structurally, the worse off they felt about themselves as well. And this right here is one of the most common postural problems mm. we see is forward head posture. Mm. And think about it. What do most people do today? Sit at the desk and... Work at a computer, yep. right? Or worse yet, the guy who came in today, he's a truck driver. Whoa. Ooh. Spends eight and a half to nine hours a day sitting. I mean, bouncing down the road, right? And his lower back is feeling it now. His discs are, are getting crushed because of that constant repetitive stress. That's where most people come in the office is because of a repetitive stress, right? I can get a trauma from lifting a 100 pound box the wrong way. Ow, that hurts, right? But most people come in because, hey, I sit at my desk with my head forward like this. And so this 12 pound head, when it's lined up with my shoulder, feels about 12 pounds to those tissues in there. But as that head starts to move forward, it feels more like 42 pounds. Right? It really starts to magnify the workload because gravity is constantly pulling down on you. You know, you can, you can stand efficiently against gravity and feel light and mobile and feel energetic, or you can lose the fight against gravity and feel like you're carrying around lead weights all day and you're getting sucked down all the time and your body is tired and fatigued, right? 
By the way, those are the two most common symptoms we see besides somebody's primary complaint. I'm tired. I'm fatigued. I don't have as much energy as I used to. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're carrying around 42 pounds instead of 12, you're working a lot harder than you should. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So basically, this one I'm just going to pass over. We're, we do a tug of war with gravity every day. And gravity never lets up. So you have to be as, as kind of close to normal as possible. This study is pretty interesting. Head and neck posture is a major factor in fatigue and immune function. Okay, in patients suffering from fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue, and immune dysfunction disorders. And uh, again, this is not chiropractic. I mean, this is medical literature and science out there that's stating, guess what? Your spine is integral to all these aspects of your health. Wow. Immune function. Did you know that? Hmm. Yeah. I didn't know until I read this research either. Nobody told me. I had to dig it up. Right? Neck curvature, and this, I mean, we could do pages of this alone, right? Mm -hmm. Neck curvature problems <laughs> led to rounding of the shoulders, headaches, neck pain, shoulder pains, and possibly even lower back pain. So neck problems leading to back pain, right? You see how all this stuff is integrally connected, right? Patients with lower back, I'm gonna translate for you in this stuff that says kyphosis of the lumbar region, which is curvature problems in the lower back, had significantly more disability. Now, if you ever read research, you'd be hard pressed to find these uh, you know, very analytical scientists using big words that, that are gonna cover a lot, like significantly more disability. That's, pretty, that's a pretty significant finding than patients with normal curve. So people with abnormal curves have more disability than those with normal curves. And there's been a lot of studies done with LNI uh, in various states where they show that um, you know, patients who are under chiropractic care coming back to work sooner and uh, um, the costing less than those who just go through the traditional medical route. Because, and nothing wrong with the traditional medical route for what it does, but essentially what happens is you just cover up the symptoms with, with medication. Yeah. So here we have a normal neck curvature which is flattening out over time. So this is kind of time-lapse photography here. And as this person's neck curve starts to go the wrong direction, we see that their bones start coming together, the discs start to squish together, and we see bone spurs starting to grow off of those vertebrae. So what you're watching right before your eyes is osteoarthritis and degenerative disc disease occurring in this person's spine. And it's because they are so far out of alignment that there's abnormal pressures on those discs and they're gonna wear out. So remember, discs are really important and you wanna preserve them as much as possible. There's two things that are gonna ruin your discs. Well, there's other factors like smoking will weaken your discs, right? So there's another good reason not to smoke. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> so with discs, you're either gonna have a trauma, like my brother, okay? He lifted a heavy box of tools. He was on a ship in Alaska. He was lifting a box of tools and he turned and they hit a wave at the same time and mm -hmm. he torqued his back like this and he traumatically herniated a couple of discs in his back. It was a very severe injury, right? So you can do it that way, which is very painful and not fun. And then the second way is you can have repetitive loading. So when somebody sits, their lower back will flatten out naturally. And I can't do it with this guy because his hips are stuck in here. But when you sit, your hips go under you and your legs go forward and your back flattens out and you put more pressure on the front of the vertebrae, which is where these discs mm -hmm. are. Now discs are soft. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like taking a sponge and I just put pressure on that sponge, all that water is gonna start squeezing out. And that's what happens to those discs. They start to become a little dehydrated then the outer layer, which is a little bit tougher, starts to crack and fissure. And that's a weakness. Okay. So now if I've been sitting for a lot and then all of a sudden I get up and I pick up a small pencil and ow, that disc may rupture because it's, there's a weakness in there and then it bulges out. So that disc herniation occurred because of a repetitive loading, abnormal position of the spine over time.